Hello, welcome back. The last vector that we're gonna solve for in this chapter is the number of periods or the investment horizon. So we're gonna start with the same basic time value of money formula. And in this, this time we want to solve for the number of time periods. So this is what we try to solve for this case. So again, we can divide both sides by present value. And in order to solve for t, which is the unknown, we need to take the log on both sides. So we'll take the log of future value divided by present value. And then we'll take the t down and that multiply that by the natural log of one plus the interest rate. The last thing we do is we divide both sides by this factor. So we divide left-hand side by the log of one plus the interest rate. So now we have time or the investment horizon is equal to the ratio of the log of future value to present value divided by the log of one plus the interest rate. If you're using your financial calculator, once again, you want to, you're computing N, which is the number of time period. Just like we did when we saw for the discount rate, it is important to remember which cash flow is an outflow, and which cash flow is an inflow. And if you don't, then you'll get an error message. So let's try this out in a problem. Let's say you want to have $20,000 for a new car and you can invest at 10% per year. Right now you have $15,000. The question is, how long do you have to wait? So when we draw a timeline, it's a little bit interesting because we don't know how long the investment horizon is. So we actually have kind of an open-ended investment horizon here. That's what we are looking for. We know that we need $20,000 at the end and we are starting with $15,000. So the problem we are asked to solve is the number of time period. And the information we have is $15,000 is our present value, future value is $20,000, and our interest rate is 10%. So the timeline gives us all the information that you need. So we have a 10% interest rate. If you're using the formula, that means we're solving for the time period. So we have the ratio of the natural log of $20,000 to $15,000 divided by the natural log of 1 plus 10%. So once again, we really need our calculator to solve this problem. But in this case, we are using the calculator as a regular calculator and not the time value of money um, problem. So the natural log of $20,000, so here is the natural log. So we have $20,000 divided by $15,000. And we want to take the natural log of that. So that gives us 0 0.2877 as our numerator. And for the, for the numerator, we have 1 plus 10%. So that's 1 plus 0.1 or 1.1. And we want to take the natural log of that. So that's 0 0.93. So 0 0.0953, and that's equal to 3.02 years. So that's how you would solve it using the formula. If you're using the financial calculator, again, we have most of the information we need. So we'll enter using the information from the timeline or using it from your notes. 
One thing that we we'll remember is that we need to enter one of these as an outflow. So once again, I'll put the present value as an outflow. So that will be negative $15,000. So if I'm using the calculator, I need to clear not just the numbers, I also need to do second function, clear TVM. So $20,000 is our future value. $15,000, remember that's an outflow, so we need to change the sign. So negative $15,000 will be the present value. And the interest rate is 10%. We need to compute n, so compute n. We get the same answer, it's three point, approximately 3.02 years. So your calculator is just another tool for you. Finally, if you are applying this in your work situation, chances are you will use an Excel spreadsheet instead of a financial calculator. The good news is that the function in, the, in, the, in Excel is exactly the same as the function that you are used to using in your calculator. And it follows the same convention as well. So if you're using Excel to solve for the interest rate, the present value and the future value must be in the opposite sign. The same is true if you solve for the number of period. So once you have, you're familiar with the financial calculator, it's very easy. Um, to use Excel to solve the problem for you. So rate is the interest rate, Amper is the investment horizon, and of course, FV is future value, and press MPV is present value. Um, the formula is very useful if you, um, instead of having to memorize um, the exact formula. Okay, we'll end, um, ch this is the end of chapter four. Good luck and good job for the first day of class.